Greetings, kindred. Wish you knew all a happy new moon. Now, as well as a new moon, we also have um, a solar eclipse. So ongoing from the lunar eclipse that was in Pisces, we now have a solar eclipse occurring in the sign of Virgo in the true lifetime sky. So this is timeanddate.com. We visited this site at the lunar eclipse to show you the pathway for that. And now we're showing you the pathway for the solar eclipse. So this is the um, total solar eclipse, this thick blue line here. And then partial as it goes out into the blue. Now the countries that will be have the most visibility, actually, I should say, is Chile and Argentina. But as you can see, you know, a lot of South America really will be witnessing this eclipse. Um, the South Atlantic here, going into the Pacific, so all the little islands around here, Hawaii should get a partial um, solar eclipse up here. And um, was it the East Islands, I think, here? Maybe the tip of, um, is that New Zealand there? Anyway, this is where the eclipse will be at its most visible. So the time the eclipse begins is um, 15.42 in the UTC time zone and will reach its peak at 18.45 in the UTC time zone and will completely come to an end at 21.47 in the UTC time zone. Now, on the whole, this is, eclipse is going to last around six hours, which is quite long, actually. It's quite a long duration for a slope solar eclipse. Um, normally, they go on for about four or five hours, in my experience. So it's pretty intense, you know, but although it's happening in this area here or the visibility, it is a global, a global event, especially a solar eclipse, because it's all about the external, the global, the masculine energy. Um, it's more about, um, you know, bringing things from the hidden into the light although it doesn't always occur on the day of the eclipse. So at the lunar eclipse, I was talking about the hidden, you know, that things were going to be erupting, you know, especially with um, the goddess Pallas transiting through Scorpio right now. I mean, she's at the last degree of Scorpio, but we'll get into that chart in a minute. So, you know, this is really about global events. and. From the lunar eclipse up to now, it's been pretty chaotic globally, hasn't it? So at the solar eclipse, it's really going to start stepping up its pace. But anyway, let's get into the chart, Will. So the new moon will actually begin on October 2nd at 1949 here in the GMT time zone, at 2.49 in the EDT time zone. And the new moon will begin on October 3rd at 4.49 in the AEDT time zone. And as the new moon begins, she will be conjunct the sun at 15 degrees. Now, I've spoken about this number 15 for about a year now, or maybe just over, because it's been showing up a lot, the number 15, and it's really been catching my eye. And in numerology, with the Kabbalah numerology, the number 15 does actually represent um, justice. Um, it's very purgatory, but it's all about the abuse of power and karmic repercussions because of that. Now, also with the sun in opposition to the north node, it also really means the same thing. And, um, you know, this, in this new moon chart, where we can see also that our new moon solar eclipse will occur in the sign of Virgo in a stellium formation. 
And this stellium is quite intense, actually, especially with the black moon Lilith conjunct the sun at one degree and the moon at one degree, the sun and moon at one degree, and also Mercury, there's two degrees there. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and there's four degrees between the south node and the black moon. So on the whole, the black moon is very, very effective in this little stellium here. Now Juno is just outside of the stellium, but she does have a part to play in this as well. So as we can see, on one side of the stellium is Mercury, and on the other is the south node. And in the middle is this eclipse, new moon eclipse, conjunct the black moon Lilith. Now this is very, very shadowy energy. And another thing I want to point out here is um, the number 16. So it has um, tremendous power, whether that's for good or ill. And it's all about the physical, the material. Um, the only thing with the number 16, it is kind of like a number that can be very rash and impulsive when it comes to putting things right. So this is a number that will fight against wrongdoing and evil of others. Um, but it can also be very destructive while it's been reconstructive. But it has tremendous energy and its influence is Mars. So, you know, as things erupt, you know, I, th I feel this solar eclipse is going to be a very, very eruptive and explosive energy. And especially since, because Mars is the influence of number 16, if we look at Mars, Mars is also at 15 degrees. So I just feel things are kicking off big time. We're already seeing the entertainment industry um, erupting in the media. Um, and the goddess Vesta is actually in Leo, in the sign of Leo at 30 degrees. Now, Leo really does rule the entertainment industry, and Vesta is all about dedication and passion. It's all about that inner fire, that, that deep desire. And, you know, the goddess Vesta is in opposition to Saturn, who is at 16 degrees, but Saturn also influences the number 15. So there's a lot of to and fro going on here. It's like exposure, but that exposure is being rebounded onto, onto others, if you like. And um, Virgo, to me, is a statistician. And a part of a statistician's work is to um, recognise patterns in their data. So they collect data, analyse data and then come up with solutions with what their findings are. Now, you know, they're very good at recognising patterns. And who's the pattern recogniser in astrology? The goddess Pallas, who's at six degrees in Scorpio. So she's at the last degree of Scorpio now. So as she's been transiting through, she's been really doing some investigative work there. Because Scorpio is also the investigator. He is also the sign of secrecy, the sign of the hidden. And he will dig and dig and dig until he finds what he is looking for. And the goddess palace is right there bearing witness to it all. She will now move into the sign of Ephucus very soon. And um Aphucus is the doctor. He actually rules medicine. He's um, not just a doctor, he's also a pharmacist. So he knows all about herbs and healing techniques, but he's more organic. So I do feel like, you know, there is a lot emerging in that industry as well. Now, Virgo is about health. It's, you know, rules the seventh house in the true lifetime sky, which is all about relationships and healthy relationships at that. 
Because the thing with Virgo is if they're not in a good place, they do suffer with their health because they rule the stomach area. And that's where a lot of nervous energy builds up. And they say that our stomach or our gut is our second brain. It's very important keeping it alkaline and and clear. So what I'm feeling here is there's a lot emerging. Um, you've got this T ongoing Grand Cross. Well, it's a T square and a Grand Cross. So at the moment, it's a T square with the nodes aimed towards the goddess Ceres. So it's at 14 degrees in Sagittarius now. The nodes do create a Grand Cross sometimes, but not on this occasion. But there is a Grand Cross that we'll talk about in a minute. So this T square is really bringing up in societies like, you know, a lot of triggering energy around child um, abuse or child um, abandonment issues, childhood neglect and stuff like that. So a lot of that's coming to the surface as well. I thought, right. What is a statistician's job? How is it defined? And I actually went on my phone and had a look. So I really want to relay to you what the answer was. So I did Google it. You know, I thought it was pretty apt, this explanation. So it says a statistician is a professional who works with statistics to collect, analyze, and interpret data. Now that we're all kind of familiar with. So it's to help to solve problems, spot trends and make predictions. So that's with the pattern recognition. They can work in both the public and private sectors and in many fields, including business, education, finance, government, health, marketing, medicine, psychology, sport and transportation. Now, all those areas or all those industries are very much in the limelight right now and have been for a while. So I do feel that all this that's emerging is to do with those industries. And I will say those industries again, business, education, finance, government, health, marketing, medicine, psychology, sport and transportation. So, you know, I just found that very, very interesting. The one thing I will say about this, though, with the Black Moon Lilith involved, is like the energies that are emerging can still be kind of hidden. But I feel people that are in tune, because remember, the lunar eclipse is all about us not being able to see clearly on a physical level, like with our physical eyes. It really does take us to open up all our senses and follow our intuition through that energy. And, um, you know, Scorpio is very much like that. It can really give us an environment of using that energy. And, and, you know, we kind of refer to it as a psychic energy because we're using our senses rather than our, our vision, our eyesight, and um, or our hearing, you know, in the physical, normal, everyday way. And um, depending on where we're at, whether it's telepathy, or feelings, or deja vu, you know, it comes to us in all different forms, depending on where we're at with our instincts at the time or what senses are more heightened during the lunar eclipse. So at this solar eclipse, I just feel like there's a lot bubbling to the surface, although I don't feel it will fully come out Until, like, you know, I mean, eclipses do tend to last, or the energies of them do tend to last for around six months. I don't think it's going to be as long as that before, you know, full exposure of this solar eclipse takes place. 
The only problem is things are also erupting in other areas, like with the conflicts that are going on around the world at the moment. I mean, they're escalating. And with this Mars-Pluto opposition here, who's actually involved in this Grand Cross as well, wow, you know, it's like we're walking on broken eggshells right now, very much so. You know, especially since Chiron is involved in this um, Grand Cross in opposition to Juno, who's very close to this little stellium here. So I feel a lot of people are recognising now, you know, that maybe they've been loyal to the wrong, the wrong, um, the wrong people or or have like um, woken up to the fact that things are not being played out how they expect them to, so their loyalties are being misplaced. Yeah, so I'm getting this feeling like a lot of people are realising that there's been a misplaced loyalty on their behalf, and maybe that's because they were hoodwinked or re they really did put their faith into someone who was not being true or honest or to someone that was just full of grandiose ideas and not really, you know, able to carry those ideas through in the constructive way that Juno expected them to. So I feel there's a lot of breaking down of relationships as well, whether they be political um, or in career or socially, it's like um, there's a big disappointment there. And that will affect us all differently, depending on our life situations at, at the time, you know, in the present moment. But we do um, also have this Mars-Pluto opposition, like I said, within this, like, Grand Cross. So I just feel, yeah, it's a time of walking on eggshells with the global situation and what is going on at the moment. And I just feel that there's going to be a lot of, um, a lot of backlash where people will need to put, certain people will need to put wrongs right. But we have to dismantle the wrongs to remedy the problem, you know? So it's a lot of work that needs to be put into this situation. And there's some things that are just beyond our control, like what's been going on recently with the rains and the explosions that have been going on in um, Southeast America, um, you know, sending lots of love and healing to all you guys out there for what you're going through at the moment. It's a very chaotic time, but it's so important that we stay grounded and focused. And if we're not able to do that in a constructive way, then we need to step back and go into meditation and do grounding techniques. Or, you know, if we need to expel that in physical form, yoga, nature walks, we really need to stay grounded with a sense of positivity, but not a false hope. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of false hope going on over the next couple of weeks. There's a couple of charts here that we're going to be looking at, you know, because we also have Jupiter going into retrograde. And the Pluto retrograde comes to an end as well within these two weeks. So there's a lot of shifts going on with the energies. But we also have a kite here. So we have um, Saturn in trine to Venus, and Venus is in trine to Mars, who's involved in this grand cross and in this opposition with Pluto, and Mars is in trine to Saturn. So this is an air kite, and on top of this kite, we have Ceres in sextile to Saturn and Ceres in sextile to Venus. So we can really get some healing work done with these energies because it encourages that. 
but it can also trigger like um extravagance like retail therapy i mean and this shows up at the lunar eclipse i feel that's very important because this um little stellium is involved this mars pluto opposition is involved as well so all we can do right now is work on ourselves and keep the faith you know in ourselves because this stellium with the black moon lilith in conjunction to the Sun, Moon and Mercury in Virgo, it can be very triggering when it comes to our sense of self-worth or self-value, you know, or confidence. When it comes to our confidence, we must be confident about what is right and what is wrong. You know, we mustn't just go along with things because, like, it's expected of us with Juno here. You know, we mustn't be loyal to what we're not comfortable with. And this energy is very, very uncomfortable. This energy is showing a lot of global shadow is emerging, but right now it's a bit stuck with the self node here. But it's filtering through. And it's very repetitive as well. So let's look at the um, Jupiter turning retrograde because Jupiter is in Taurus at the moment. And Jupiter is in trine to the goddess Juno, like I said. But anyway, these are husband and wife in mythology. And like Juno was very loyal to Jupiter. Um, you know, to her own detriment, to be honest, because he just really took her for granted. And in with Jupiter in Taurus, it can really emit a very self-absorbing energy. So let's get into that chart. So Jupiter will be in his retrograde on October 9th at 7.55 in the GMT time zone. So. As Jupiter begins his retrograde, he will be at 27 degrees in Taurus. Now, Jupiter in Taurus can really hold a lot of unrealistic expectations. He can also be very narrow-minded and doesn't like to admit when he's wrong, especially in retrogrades. So what he needs to do is um, stop feeling like he needs to impress people. You know, Taurus is all about material security, material and financial security. And Jupiter is very exaggerative. You know, he's very keenly, very much likes to be looked up to. But what he needs to do is really accept, like, things take their own course, that we can't enforce things. Do you know what I mean? Because we want to impress people or we want to look a certain way, we want to look more than what we are or be more than what we are. Sometimes we just have to get into that place of acceptance and see the beauty in in what we have now rather than what we haven't got. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes we do have to be thankful for what we have rather than, you know, pine for the things that we don't have. And I feel this is the energy that we need to watch out for as Jupiter goes into retrograde. Now, Jupiter will be in trying to the sun and Juno here. So in a way, Jupiter's got a lot to be thankful for. Now, with Jupiter in retrograde, in trying to Mercury, you know, this is all about speeches, law, um, our public image. It's very political or is an energy that involves political establishments. But like I said, there is a block there with this square to Vesta on self-development and not trusting the process, you know, the natural process, the natural law. So 
you know, it can be a very forceful energy. Now, the sun will be at 22 degrees, and this is all about overcoming self-limitations to reach the heights of consciousness in universal law. So Jupiter is very grounded in Taurus. I mean, Taurus is not a sign that's easily convinced of anything. And Jupiter can be very, very narrow-minded when it comes to his religious point of view, you know, or his spiritual point of view. Taurus is also very traditional, so is Jupiter. So maybe they're trying to enforce um, traditional values or traditional beliefs and get support for that, but not sort of like... um, Yeah, not give false hope, basically. And in opposition to the moon, who's at one degree in Sagittarius, and Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, I would say, you know, maybe we can be, some of us can be feeling a little bit over-optimistic, you know, that all is well. Let's not worry about anything when really we should be taking things a little bit more seriously. So as Jupiter begins his retrograde, it's also creating this T-square with this opposition of the moon. So Jupiter in opposition to the moon is creating this T-square towards Neptune, who's retrograding in Pisces. So there can be a lack of wisdom with the moon in opposition to Jupiter. There can be a lack of discrimination, overindulgence, um, which is also connected to extravagance. And this energy can block progress because of emotional attachments to the old. So really, we need to break away from the old to make way for the new. But. It's where we do that. We've got to be realistic in what areas of life we can do that. And normally when it comes to Jupiter and Neptune, it's on the spiritual paths. So with Jupiter in square to Neptune, there can be a lot of emotional excess. You know, a lot of religious idealism that's impractical. This is where we can build castles in the sky while everything around us is falling apart. This is not admitting that things are are kind of like needing attention. Um, Yeah, it's just really ignoring what is important, what is truly important. You know, and it can be a very dishonest energy as well, or very self-deceptive. So there can be a lack of a grip on reality with this. There can also be addiction issues that arise around this energy, mental health issues. This is like me saying, oh, everything's fine, everything's wonderful. And I'm standing like in absolute, devastation so we need to ask ourselves you know throughout this solar eclipse and as jupiter begins his retrograde are we being honest with ourselves are we being realistic with what we're seeing emerge around us what part do we play in it all where can we make the changes where does our focus need to be We can't blindsight ourselves out of fear or, you know, where we don't want to accept that things around us are falling apart. You know, information may be emerging, especially now the goddess Pallas has moved into Ophugus and will be at two degrees as Jupiter goes into retrograde. So I really do feel that a lot of people will be um, burying their heads in the sands with their circumstances. And it is a very overwhelming situation that's occurring on a global level. 
So I think we just need to be aware of that. So I just want to look at one more chart, which is the Pluto chart, because Pluto comes to the end of his retrograde. So Pluto will end his retrograde on October 12th at 2.05 in the GMT time zone. Now we still have a little bit of a stellium going on, but um, the Black Moon Lilith is in conjunction with Mercury still. So it's still a time where we need to be careful you know, with um, what's being said, because it's very, very cutting, very cut and dry. But also what I'm seeing here is this yod with Neptune in sexual to Uranus, which is a generational aspect. Um, it's all connected to, and I'm saying this in, um, in colons, New World Order, but it's all about science and energy, especially atomic energy. It's also about, with Pluto in Sagittarius, it's about transformation occurring through fire. And um, we did see a lot of that when Pluto was um, transiting through the sign of Sagittarius. I mean, he did enter into Capricorn, um, I think last year. And, yeah, but so he's retrograded back into Sagittarius. So he, a lot of old issues from a couple of years ago are re-emerging. And um, I just feel when Pluto's in Sagittarius, there's an uprise. Um, and it's normally destruction by fire, this energy creates. And we saw, like I said, we saw a lot of fires and explosions going on while Pluto was in Sagittarius over those number of years. When it's in Capricorn, it's all about the transformation of corporations and old traditional structures. Um, but it's really based on self-vested interest as well. So we have to be careful with that because it's all around corporates and politicians. And what are we seeing here? Saturn at 15 degrees. Retrograded back to 15 degrees. So I feel even as Pluto comes to an end, there's going to be another shift another emergence, you know, and there is this, like I said, this yod, this generational aspect of the sextile between Neptune and Uranus making this yod towards Mercury and the Black Moon Lilith. Wow, it's kind of very combative. You know, it's all about idealism and the expansion of consciousness with this Neptune sextile Uranus um, aspect. But, you know, it's also an aspect of genius and um, it's really great for musicians and artists. It's very good for creativity. But since it's creating this um, quincunx towards Mercury, then it's like dreams and reality are out of sync. And this is where we can build castles in the sky. It's all about clouded perceptions. Self-honesty is very important during this time, as well as grounding techniques. So with Uranus in Quincunx to Mercury, you know, there is a need here to slow down. So again, I just feel that, you know, things are being acted upon too quickly. And it's just kind of creating more chaos, more frustration. We really do need to um, find some inner peace. We really need to work on that right now because the energies are very intense. What's emerging is going to be quite explosive. And so it's quite an explosive time that we're going to be going through. I would say for the rest of this year, at least, you know, but I feel the full impact of it all will be through October. I feel October is going to be quite a month to get through. Hopefully by November, we may get a little bit of a pause because we do, when we go through intense times like this, we do tend to get a little bit of a pause or a little bit of a break because it's just too much. 
it's it's very overwhelming. And like I said, you know, there's a lot of um, a lot of depression, a lot of mental health issues servicing, a lot of triggers around child abuse, a lot of triggers around corruption and abuse of power. Do you know what I mean? It's just a very, very intense time. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there, Kindred. Just keep the faith and I'm sending you all peace and much love. Take care.